Hi, everyone. And hello, Patrick Raymond Kelly. You asked me to respond to your video. I'm not going to. I'm going to respond to the paper instead. Don't worry, it's the same thing. Uh, first, I'm going to summarize it. I had a hard time summarizing the video using clips because everything you say requires context. So it, it's... I basically have to put in the entire video, I, I felt. So I'm going to do my best to summarize what it was you said. Okay. What's this all about? I was asked to review someone's idea about what dark matter really is. And this doesn't seem like a crank. It seems like someone who admits that he is not an astrophysicist uh, and has thought about this and come up with an idea and he wants to see if it floats, basically. It does not. <laughs> but it's not pseudoscientific stupid nonsense. It's, uh, it's an idea that uh, is... I, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's wrong. I'm gonna say we, we can't really tell at this point. It, as it is presented, it is not going to convince me, if I put it that way. But I'm gonna explain roughly what it's about. Um, the idea here is that dark matter could be explained as the result not of extra mass in a galaxy, but as a force pushing from the voids surrounding the galaxies. And the greater the voids, the greater this force. This means that you will have lots of dark matter on the outsides of galactic clusters. The galaxies on the outsides of the clusters will have more dark matter than the galaxies in the center, for example. Um, and he has checked out a bunch of these predictions and found that they seem to check out. Um, the problem isn't so much that the predictions check out. And I tried responding to this way back, months ago, but I realized, I tried going over, does this make this prediction? I don't think it does. Oh, wait, it does. You know, I, I found that it does make all these predictions that, that you list in the paper. It does predict, uh, let's see what it is here. You have some, excuse me, you have a bunch of predictions here. Uh, cluster formations and um, uh, stuff like that. Um, and how it relates to the expansion of the universe because it creates pressure uh, that pushes everything away. Um, uh, da, 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 da. What else was there? Clear The clearing out of uh, voids so that galaxies will gather in clusters. Um, there were several predictions made. I can't find them here. This is going to take me a while. Uh, they don't really matter. That's why I didn't do my homework before starting this. Um, they don't matter because what you're doing is replacing a pulling force with a pushing force in the same direction. It's described by the same force vector. So mathematically, what you have proposed is indistinguishable from what we already have. What it does is introduce a new mechanism. There has to be some way that voids produce this pressure. And it's not dark energy. It's like dark energy on steroids. Dark energy does not account for it. Vacuum energy, that is. So what's the mechanism? If you can't tell me what the mechanism is, I don't see how you're going to be able to make any unique predictions. So that's the next step here. You said you're not proposing a mechanism, and that's good in the sense that you, you don't have one, so you shouldn't propose one. But because you don't have one, we're stuck on this predicts everything that we already know is accurate. You have basically worked in the wrong direction. Develop something that fits the facts. Explain something that fits the facts. Come up with an explanation that fits all the facts.
but doesn't make a new prediction. Uh, I'm gonna sound like an asshole saying this, but it's no different than saying it's magic or God did it. See, I explained everything. Well, yes, but in a way that makes no predictions, so it's scientifically useless. What is the mechanism? That's what we need. I am going to address the math, and the math isn't in the video. You, in the paper, you actually have math in it. Uh, I'm going to put the equation here, uh, where f is not a force, it is the effect, the, the magnitude of the effect expressed in solar masses worth of apparent dark matter. Uh, and dm and di uh, are uh, the mean distance between particles in the void that we're looking at, and uh, r is the distance across the void. Uh, di is the ideal distance, and I'm not clear on what that means in this context. I'm sorry, um, I don't know, but that really doesn't matter because the way you calibrate this is by looking at the Milky Way and looking at how much apparent dark matter there is in it. This is found by looking at the rotation curves of stars in the galaxy. You then plug in the distance to Andromeda and the, the dm over di for the void between the Milky Way and Andromeda and you get that result. That's how you calibrate the constants in this. The problem with this approach is that if you use the same formula to calculate the apparent amount of dark matter in Andromeda by looking at the distance to the Milky Way, you get the exact same number. And here's another problem. What if we calculated the amount of dark matter in the Milky Way by not plugging in the distance to Andromeda, but the distance to the Large Magellanic Cloud instead. We'd get a different amount of dark matter in the Milky Way. And no matter what two galaxies you pick, you will get a unique number, and it will be the same number for both of them. But then you compare this one to this one, and see that they are also the same, but it's not the same as when... Th this math is just not well thought out. And it suggests to me that you are going to have a hard time doing what I would like to suggest that you do, and that is that you look for new predictions by looking at the general relativistic version of this, by looking at space-time curvature instead of looking at forces. Uh, the math is going to be a lot more complicated, and I'm sorry to say that if this is... Um, if, if you, if you, I, I don't mean to say that you're, you're an idiot, but if you run into problems working out the math at, at this level, I, I don't think you are ready for that. Um, another problem you have is that you don't seem to know all that much about the currently existing model of cosmology. You propose, for example, that the reason things are moving away from each other is that they carry momentum from the Big Bang. And in your model, it, it is instead the voids that produce outward pressure causing things to move away. There is no momentum from an explosion. Instead, it's space-time itself that is growing. But that is the currently accepted model. which you didn't seem to know. And that gets me worried that you are really biting off way more than you can chew here. I really hope I haven't insulted you because you do something that pseudoscience crackpots that I have no problem insulting um, seeming capable of. And that is, instead of saying, ha ha, I came up with this, I disproved all of science, you look for people who might actually be able to tell you if you're on the right track. That's a good thing, and I encourage that. And I do encourage you to keep working with this. But you need to take a bunch of classes before you do. That's the problem. So good luck if you...
turn out to be right. Awesome. I don't believe that dark matter is uh, a, a new exotic form of matter that doesn't fit into the standard model because I am enamored with the idea. I'm not. It sucks. I wish we could come up with a better explanation, but it doesn't look like any other explanation works. That's the problem. But I wish you luck once again. See ya.